friend, our land teems with the restless vigor of youth, and yet it harbors within itself the inconceivably ancient. When our great king, the fourth that Moza, may he live, prosper, and be healthy, was yet a prince, his strength was bounteous and his beauty shone forth as though he were Horus himself. A mighty hunter, he stalked his prey with bow and arrow while thundering along the plains in his chariot drawn by horses swifter than the winds. One day, seeking rest after a hunt, Thutmose approached the shadow of three mighty pyramids from the distant past. The pyramids of the ancient kings Khufu, Khafre, and Menkaure, whose golden peaks looked down upon the drifts of sand swirling in the brilliant noonday sun. Half buried in those sands lay a colossal figure in rock a lion with powerful talons, and the serene and awesome face of a god. Its countenance, crowned with the sacred cobra, gazed from ages past into the pathless future. In the noon's heat, dreaming came upon Thutmose. Shielding his eyes against the fiery sun, he seemed to see the mighty face warm and soften into life. I am Harmachis, Horus in the horizon, he said. I am your father and the father of all pharaohs. One day you shall be king and rule over the two lands. You shall wear the red crown and the white. The land shall be yours in its length and breadth, all that the sun looks upon. But you see how time has nearly buried me in sand. When you are king, remember me and treat me as a son treats his father. Fatmosa was astonished. Not least because, though a prince, he was not the eldest born. Yet soon thereafter, Thutmose became Pharaoh. Mindful of his fateful meeting with Hermachus, Thutmose cleared away the sand from the Colossus and exposed it once again for a million generations to admire. Behold! Even now, the Sphinx looks upon you, friend, with the same ageless gaze that Moses saw so long ago. Once again, it seems to speak. Look upon me and remember.